Hi, I'm Jérôme Rivet from Opal RT and today I'm going to introduce you to the OP1200 uh, MMC test bench rack, uh, which is the rack over here. And I'm going to go through the different features of the rack. Uh, first, by looking at the, the component we see in the front side view of the rack. So I'll go first with the protection box, which is in the top here. The protection box is where your AC and DC lines connect to the rack. Uh, this box includes uh, contactors and uh, breakers to isolate the rack in case of uh, problems. Uh, plus it includes uh, an emergency stop to completely isolate in case of emergency uh, the voltages in the rack. And in addition it contains also like uh, disconnect switches to properly isolate the rack in the case you want to manipulate the different modules that are inside the rack. Then comes uh, the OP4510, which is the Opal RT simulator that here acts as a central controlling unit in the case of an RCP simulation. Uh, here, the, all the signals from the systems are sent to the 4510, so all cells voltages, arm currents, grid and uh, DC currents are, can be seen by the 4510, so that's where you will implement your control. Uh, then comes a patch panel where you can output like uh, analog output signals. Uh, in the case you want to drive an, an amplifier that would be making your AC or DC grid. Uh, then comes the 1210 uh, unit, which is the MMC uh, module. Uh, each uh, 1210 unit contains 10 cell module in a full bridge configuration. It can be uh, either configured as a half bridge emulation by blocking a switch in the software or by uh, in hardware connecting a jumper to make a, so it makes it fully versatile to make half bridge or full bridge. Uh, each so standard configuration comes with six 1210 unit, uh, which makes 60 cells for a complete uh, three phase converter, which makes 10 some modules per phase, uh, 10 levels per phase, and um, uh, which makes a total of uh, 240 switches in the rack, which are all controlled by the 4510. Uh, so I'll go down to like the measurement box, which is a grid connection uh, unit that has uh, measurement uh, sensors to measure AC and uh, DC grid uh, voltage and currents. Plus it includes like pre-charge resistors with bypass contactors to enable like a realistic pre-charge uh, sequence. And then there's the, uh, in the bottom of the rack, there's the AV inductance box, which includes the arm inductors. Uh, the boxes can be put in series. Uh, the standard rack comes with one box, but you can add up to four boxes if you want. And they are all connected in series to, uh, so that you can play with the configuration if you want to change the inductances uh, in your tests. Okay, now let's take a look inside the OP1210 modules. Uh, to see how the cells are interconnected together. So, what's in interesting of this is the how easy it is to uh, reconfigure your rack into like from full bridge configuration to hardware half bridge configuration. You can do that just by exchanging this jumper here that can be easily uh, disconnected with a flat screwdriver, and you just need to then reconnect it to the other jumper in order to. Uh, have your full bridge, your full bridge to connect it as a half bridge. Uh, it can be also done by software by blocking one extra switch. But uh, in some certain research, you want to have like a real half bridge, and this enables you to do it. And it's also possible to uh, connect other types of cells if it's required. Uh, this unit is plenty versatile for this application. Now we'll look at how it is possible to reconnect the OP1210 unit to the overall rack. So I'll just put this drawer back inside the rack. Now looking from the back of the rack, we can see here that the, the simple connection from each OP1210 module, which is basically two optic fibers that can be easily reconnected, and one power connector. And that's it. You have reconnected your OP1210 to the rack. Before going to the software features of the MMC test bench, uh, we will first take a look at the power schematic uh, just to see how the different components are interconnected together. 
Uh, so we first saw here the protection box, uh, which is the line incoming module, uh, where you find the disconnect switches, breakers, uh, contactors, uh, that gives you full control over your AC and DC line. Uh, the protection box is then connected to the measurement unit, uh, where you have like uh, the conditioning module that enables you to interface like power signals to the simulators. And you have also like the pre-charge resistor on AAC and DC uh, with the bypass contactors that are required for normal operations. Uh, then you have the arm inductance modules uh, that here you have four shown, but uh, you can have different numbers of inductance modules depending on the, your needs. Uh, then you have here the OP1210 units that are connected to directly to the measurement unit and then to the uh, inductance, uh, arm inductance units. Uh, here is the standard uh, standard setting with like the six uh, OP1210 units that makes uh, 10 some modules per valve uh, for a total of 60 some modules for a three-phase uh, MMC converter. Okay, let's look at how does the OP1200 test bench translates uh, into a, re a real-time model into the Simulink environment. Uh, so here you have your master subsystem and your console subsystem. So all the real-time code that will be uh, sent to your Opal RT simulator, uh, here is the OP4510, uh, is located into the uh, master subsystem. So let's look at uh, how does the OP1200 is uh, represented there. So I go into this subsystem and uh, so here you have this subsystem that is supplied with the test bench. Uh, which actually represents all the inputs and all the outputs of your uh, of your actual test bench. So now it becomes really easy to uh, interface your control with it. Uh, you have all uh, your like uh, uh, digital input to start, stop, reset, uh, configure, and uh, control your bypass contactors uh, and uh, line contactors uh, that are all inputs of this block. Uh, you have two options. You can send uh, directly modulation indexes to the FPGA on the OP4510, uh, which comes with uh, 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 like a, a demo uh, low-level control, or you can decide to make your low-level control inside the RT Lab uh, into the CPU system. So uh, here is another way you can transfer your gate signals to the system. Uh, and in return, you receive uh, your OP1210 measurements, so that's the cell voltages and the arm currents. And analog in measurements are the measurements that are made inside uh, the measurement box. This means like uh, phase current and uh, phase voltage. Uh, plus, you get some data from the system to actually know what uh, what status the different boxes are in. And, and then the, an alarm code for this uh, blocks if some alarm conditions are detected. Um, just to show you like the different uh, signals you can receive into measurement all that are they all package into bus signals so i'll just put like a bus selector here and uh just to show you here that like you have like here for box one you can have 10 voltages uh, and box one you get the current of box one so here it goes you have like the six boxes that are in the rack and uh so if you want to access these signals uh, then you just have to simply uh, load um, these uh, these signals to like the uh, through the bus selector, and then you can connect uh, to whatever uh, logic that you have. Uh, in this demo, we have included a simple DQ control uh, to algorithm to regulate the DC bus voltage of the converter uh, in order to be able to connect it to an AC grid. Uh, we won't go in de uh, into the details of this control since it's not the topic of this video, um, but I will show you how, uh, how how simple it is to actually run a simulation and operate your test bench. So now my model was uh, compiled and sent to the real-time simulator, the OP4510, to act as a MMC central controller. Uh, and this is the console uh, for this model where I access the different scopes on the variables of the MMC and I have the different constants uh, to my controller. Uh, I will just show you quickly how, how, the, how to start this uh, converter 
uh, with uh, this simple model. Uh, how it works is that I have like uh, here an AC precharge command switch that will uh, ask for an AC precharge sequence. Uh, and once this is done, uh, I will be able to close my uh, AAC and DC breaker to connect the converter to the grid. Uh, the converter will act as a statcom converter, just injecting injecting virus to the network. Uh, here I have my scopes that are open uh, for the uh, the cell voltages. So on one side I have my upper uh, upper arm uh, boxes which is uh, 1, 3 and 5 and here are my lower arm boxes so uh, 2, 4 and 6 and these are the arm currents uh, related to uh, to upper and lower arm uh, so now that I activated the switch uh, I can go and um, close the DC and AC breaker and now the converter pre-charge uh, to its nominal value of 40 once the once the cells are charged to their nominal value, I can activate uh, uh, my control uh, algorithm. Now we can see that there's some instability when we uh, actually pass the control to uh, the control unit. And now that the control is more stable, then I can change the Q current reference. Uh, I can increase it to 10, let's say. And now we can see that some ripple appears on the cell capacitors. Um, I can change this uh, time constant for the time range for the scopes, so that we can see here the um, we can see the ripple on the capacitor voltage. Uh, and we can go as well in this scope here, uh, which is the scope uh, of the measurement taken in the measurement box. Uh, which are the phase current and the phase voltage and the DC and uh, DC uh, voltage and current. Um, now we can still change uh, current reference. So we can see that uh, it's 20 e EQ and we have here 20 peak on the the, the current, the phase current. Uh, so that's uh, that's it with this short demo. Uh, of how to run a control on the MMC test bench. Thanks for watching this video and for more information about Opalarty products please visit our website opalarty.com.